capability of protecting a domain controller using full server failover. On the screen I have two Windows 2008 servers, both running on dissimilar hardware. The server on the left is a domain controller, the server on the right is a clean Windows install. We configure double take full server failover from the target DR server or from a third node. Configuration is a five step process. Select the source server. You may need to provide credentials to access the source server. Select the target server. You may need to provide credentials if the existing credentials do not have access to the target server. Step three is to configure protection. We can choose to exclude volumes or directories. We can specify services to leave running on the target server. By default, most services are actually disabled. We can enable scheduled snapshots of the data on the target server, which gives us the ability to fail over to a previous point in time. The failover tab allows us to configure failure detection. We can configure manual or automatic failover. Network mapping allows us to choose failover type. Do we want to apply the source server IP address to the target server on failover? Or if we are failing over to a remote subnet, we may want to update DNS as part of the failover process. Double take availability can automatically update any Windows DNS server as part of the failover process. The advanced tab allows us to configure routing, type of mirror, either a full mirror or checksum mirror. A checksum mirror allows us to pre-seed data, therefore saving one utilization. We can also configure compression. Double take has three levels of compression. The fourth step of configuration is to validate. Double Tate will carry out a series of validation tests to verify that the source and target data are compatible. Once validation has been completed, it's possible to complete the final step of the process and enable protection. Once we enable protection, Double Tate will create the replication set on the source server and will create a connection to the target server. It may take some time for the initial mirror of the data to complete, but Double Tate will continue to replicate in real time until the mirror has completed. While we wait for the initial mirror of the data to complete, I will demonstrate Double Take's replication engine in action. I will use Windows Explorer on the source and target server, open the C drive, create a new folder on the source server, and we'll see the new folder appears immediately on the target server. Rename the folder, it's renamed immediately on the target server. If I enter the uh, new folder and create a new text document, I, as soon as I create it, it appears on the target server. I can rename it, and again, that's replicated in real time. I can edit the file, put some text inside the file. Save that document. Go to my target server, open up the replica copy of the file, and we can see the, the data was replicated in real time. If I delete the file, we can see the file is instantly deleted from the target server. I delete the folder. Again, the folder on the target server is immediately deleted. Once the initial mirror of the data is completed, the protection status changes to enabled. This means the source DC is protected and we could fail over to DR. Before simulating a failure, I'm going to create a file on the desktop. I'm going to make a registry change to simulate installing an application on the source server. We'll see the change being made in the registry um, applied to the target server after failover. To simulate the failure, I'm going to disconnect the network card from the domain controller. After a few moments, the protection status will change to source unavailable. The target server is beginning the countdown before initiating a failover condition. Once the failover condition has been met, we can initiate a manual failover. 
we are then prompted to use either the live data, the latest version of the data, or a previous point in time using one, either one of the scheduled snapshots or manual created snapshots. The failover process begins. The system state from the source server is applied to the target server and finally there will be a reboot of the target server. Once the system state has been applied, the target server will be automatically rebooted by double take. The target server is going to reboot using registry and application information from the source server. Yet hardware drivers from the original target server will be maintained. This allows full server failover between completely dissimilar hardware types. As we log on to the target server, we can see that all configuration information has been carried over from the source server, including that registry key change.